Dating back to the ancient Greek and Egyptian times, battle door, commonly known as badminton, was play between two players, hitting a feathered shuttlecock back and forth with small rackets. Moving forward to today, the game has only had minor adaptations. The sport is still play between two or four people, hitting a shuttle back and forth with a racket, but instead over a net. The overall objective of the game is to strike the shuttle into the opponent's court, hitting the ground, ending the point. Biomechanics is the study of scientific factors as they apply to the human body and sports implements in motion. During this high performance game, having good technique is important. The easiest way of improving technique is breaking down the athlete's movements using biomechanics. By discussing the different biomechanical principles, a coach can highlight specific points on where the athlete can improve so they can play at their peak performance. The most common way for an athlete to win the point during gameplay is through the use of a smash shot. This shot is played when an athlete is looking to finish the point during gameplay. It can be played at any position on the court, but if played towards the back of the court, a jump is usually added to create more power behind the smash, ensuring the shuttle is hit in a downwards trajectory. This gives the player an advantage due to the opponent having little time to react or move into an effective position to return the shuttle. A breakdown of the badminton smash consists of four movement phases, approach, smash, follow through and recovery. To reiterate the steps for the approach phase in a forehand badminton smash, a player is to hold the racket with the correct grip, the forehand grip. This grip ensures that the player has complete control over their racket. Next, the player should stand side on to the net with their non-dominant foot forward. All weight should be then shifted to the back or dominant foot. This will shift the athlete's line of gravity over their dominant foot, loading up their power on their strongest leg. During this process, the lead arm, non-racket hand, should be raised to locate and point at the incoming shuttlecock. This provides the athlete with the assurance that their line of gravity will not fall out of their base support, causing them to maintain the control of their balance, resulting in them keeping on their feet. In addition to moving themselves into an effective position to approach the shuttle, the athlete's racket arm should be rotating in angular motion, anti-clockwise, at their shoulder ready to meet the shuttle above, just in front of them, in preparation for the next movement phase. The next phase of the movement is called the smash. The smash takes place when contact is made between the racket and the shuttlecock, also known as a point of impulse. The athlete should drop their lead arm quickly to produce torque as they rotate their body around to smash the shuttle with more power. Upon the point of impulse, the athlete must flick their wrist down to cause the shuttlecock to be hit in a downwards trajectory over the net, ultimately ending the point. The third phase of the badminton smash is the follow through. When a player follows through in their smash, they should continue swinging their racket through to their non-dominant hip. As they shift their weight from the rear foot to the non-dominant foot, the athlete needs to remember that they need to keep their line of gravity inside their base of support so they can keep control over their balance and stability. Lastly, the player will go through the recovery phase where the player returns to the base or ready position. This position is situated in the middle of their side of the court where the base of support is wide and slightly bent over to lower their centre of gravity. To return back to this, the athlete needs to take small steps on the balls of their feet so that, if needed, they can return the opponent's shot. Upon studying the biomechanics of how a smash should look like, I started looking at my performance, breaking it down into the four movement phases so I could identify where improvement was needed. In this first shot, it is evident that my smash phase needs improving. Firstly, instead of dropping my lead arm to create torque, I had swung it around my body horizontally. This caused an extensive loss in potential energy and power for the incoming shuttle. I recommend next time that when I execute this movement, that I remember to drop this arm straight down. Upon slowing this video down, I've noticed that I did not flick my wrist during the point of impulse. This caused the shuttlecock's trajectory to stay straight and level instead of the wanted high to low whilst travelling over the net. If I want to end the point during my smash, 
This is the most critical part of it, so I need to remember to quickly flick my wrist next time. In this next shot, I approached the shuttle with the forehand grip as well as side on. As I was moving back to the ready position from my last shot, the opponent had hit the shuttle back unexpectedly. Because of this, evidently, my approach phase was executed poorly. As I was approaching the shuttle, I had loaded all my power onto my non-dominant leg when it should have been shifted to the other. By doing this, I had planted my feet too early, causing me to jump backwards. If I had not stopped too early in this smash, then my outcome would have been improved. Upon watching this smash, I have realised that I did not completely extend my lead arm up towards the incoming shuttle. By extending this, I would have created more power behind my shot. Lastly, as I only just raised my racket arm and failed to use my full radius of rotation in my shoulder, this caused me to hit the shuttle with less force. To improve this, I need to make sure that I swing my racket arm back to gain all possible power behind my racket.